Hello, canoeist Lisa Dehart here, Three Minutes with the Main Guide, and we're going to do part two of Wilderness Canoe Repair. We're going to take this bag and I'm going to show you everything. So you got a breach in the hull, you've pulled over, you've emptied out the gear, you found your repair kit, okay, and now we're just going to do the very next thing you're going to do. If you've got like a wool coat or a little clear spot on the ground, um, you're going to just empty the bag. you got to see what you got. But I, if you've got it labeled staging, glass cloth, flex tape, G-flex, tools and hardware, potions, and then this one is sewing, nails, and oil. We're going to do that last. But what it does is, if you've got it labeled and compartmentalized, it's going to make it a lot easier. And what you're going to do is you're going to start with staging, because this is the first thing you're going to do. So I'm going to lay all this out, and I'll show you what's in it. So we have gloves, the cloth you're going to wipe with. Um, the mixing palettes, um, and the little things you're going to squeeze out the epoxy on if you choose to do that and mix with the popsicle sticks. Um, sandpaper, a lot of times you're going to have to rough up that surface of the canoe to get whatever's going to stick to it, to, to heal it, to stick to it. And I technically I thought about putting this in tools and hardware, but it's such a first step after you get all that done. Um, that I've got the stainless steel wire in this in this package. Okay, next up, tools and hardware. So we've got zip ties, two different sizes. The little brown ones are usually great for anything uh, that you have to replace a cotter pin for in the wild. Uh, Old Town Canoe Boat Parts. These are worth their weight in gold because these long stainless steel bolts are very difficult to get now. No hardware store has those. Um, it's actually pretty easy to carve your own thwart or um, your own portage yoke in the wild. We might do that for three minutes, but the hard thing to get is the hardware. And then if that hardware sometimes is a little bit um, stripped out, it can be. So this is worth its weight in gold. Just a little thing of... Uh, Tank bond, that's really nice, and it works. If there's a script stripped out screw, that works. Um, these are the wing nuts that fit the handle of the Big Daddy fry pan. I never take my handle off, but in case anything ever happens to one, those are the, the wing nuts for it. Uh, these are the lag screws that I screw into the bottom of a setting pole and then cut the head off. Which brings me to my next thing. My husband, um, Jeff Dehart, is a, is a uh, canoe guide, registered main guide, gifted polar. And he's handy dandy, not just handsome, but he's handy. And this is a hacksaw blade that he put in an old, see the end of this comes off. And he loaded it into the, I swear it comes off. And he loaded that in there, and that's a hacksaw blade so that I can cut the head off after I've got it screwed in there. Set and pull repair uh, happens uh, more frequently, definitely, than boat repair, especially if you own a Royal X Old Town Canoe because you can just pound those for decades. Um, then I've got the hand drills that I featured in part one, but I, I blue taped the blades so that nothing happens to them. Another little hand drill. I've got the nice um, ratcheting uh, wrench that exactly fits the screws to the hardware in here. And I've got a couple of axe wedges. I have two of everything. Uh, that's my disease. If I could make myself carry only one axe wedge, only one of these, it might be a little bit better, but I just can't do it. Okay, so next we've got the potions. I've got the uh, fiberglass skid plate cloth. There's enough in there for one skid plate. Um, the two-part epoxies. This one is a five-minute. This one is a two-hour. This one, the five-minute, I've timed out to about uh, 20, 25 minutes, half an hour. The two-hour, I've never timed out, but I would guess at least double it. Um, Marine-grade goop. 
I like this. I like the flexibility of it, and um, I've used this a lot, and the drying time is good about, it's about half an hour. JB Weld two-part epoxy putty. Uh, super glue, just a little tiny individual thing of super glue. Um, this DAP product I haven't used yet, but I like DAP products, and it says it works with ABS. Uh, the tried and true seam grip and aqua seal for leaky tents and just a really high quality gorilla duct tape and glue sticks craft like they use in crafting like they put in a glue gun glue sticks this is nothing more than a craft glue stick a cheap glue stick um, look at the flexibility of that, okay? Mike Patterson and Larry Totten are two guides worth their weight in gold, and um, they showed me this. I actually repaired a kayak that had a hole in the stern like this. So this is just a simple Mr. Peabody's way back moment because we used to just take our lighter and we drip them right onto the boat. And the brilliant thing about this is the colder it is, the faster it works. And the only thing it takes to activate it is the lighter in your pocket. It's always the simplest thing. So, so here we go. And then we just drip it. Right along the crack, right along whatever it was, we just drip it. All right, so there's that. You can take the end of it and you can spread it out or move it or whatever you want to do. You know, that five-minute epoxy I was saying is actually in the field, it's 25 minutes. This, on a decent cool day, this will time out at actually five minutes. And then you take your high-quality duct tape and when it's still, when it's firm, just firm it up, but still really warm to the touch, you stick that duct tape on there and it just sucks the duct tape right in because of the heat in the melting glue. It's just brilliant. So then let's say you can do a real canoe repair. The weather's going to be favorable to you and the conditions. Um, we've got the flex tape, the G flex, uh, West systems, epoxy, and I like these tubes because the thing you're going to, because there's a lot. When it comes to the smaller little two-piece and you squeeze, a lot of times you got one shot with that because there just isn't enough. Then I got the nice real deal fiberglass cloth and the instructions. But I also photograph these and I have them on the phone like I talked about in the last video. So they're much easier to read in the dark and the weather and the things like that. And you can make the print bigger. Okay, this is the last of it, sewing nails and oil. This is just gun cleaning cloth, just a little oil protectant for the axes and the knives and the things like that. This is a hollow tube that I keep uh, all the various size nails that I might need in. I used to use those for different things in boat repair, but honestly, the hand drills are a lot better, but I'll keep them. And just some serious Glover's needles in here, too. And just a couple little things that, you know, you could use sewing. This is just a iron-on cloth patch. And honestly, if you heat up a, a pot on a stove where you're not going to get black on stuff, but I made sure the, the patch was black, too, you can just heat up the bottom of that pot, put that on a blown-out elbow or a knee, and just put the pot down on it like it's an iron. And that works good. Got some fake sinew here that breaks down into actually four strands. So that's actually four times what's on there. And that's really good for sewing. This is steel tape. This is aluminum tape that uh, I used to use in, well, I thought I would use in boat repair. I never actually have done it. But this I keep with me. This is just a piece of a heavy duty rubber piece of inner tube. And that way, if I ever end up having to pole a river that's low with a weak, with, with a, with a breach in it or anything, I can put that, I'd put that last right on the rock side, right at the, 
at the, as the last thing on the repair. Sharpening stone, probably out of everything in here, I use that the most. And that's it. That's all of it. Okay, canoeists, that's it for now for canoe repair. I'm Lisa Dehart, and you just spent three minutes with the main guy. Mm -hmm.